us, inviting us into worship, inviting us into the very presence of God to join with all the saints who have gone before, with all the angels and all the voices of heaven to worship God and lift our praises before God. So let's stand and uh, say together our call to worship, which is from Psalms 42 and 43. Would you please stand? This will be a responsive call to worship. As the deer pants for streams of water, so we long for you, O God. We thirst for you, the living God. When can we come and stand in your presence? Through each day, the Lord pours his unfailing love upon us. Through each night, we sing his songs, praying to the God who gives us life. Send out your light and your truth, O God. Let them guide us to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. Then we will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all our joy. Let's sing to God, the source of all our joy, with hymn number 310, Rejoice, the Lord is King. start to worship. How wonderful to be able to sing praises to our God. And please stay standing so that we can say the following uh, first part of the Westminster Larger Confession together, the foundational confession of our Reformed faith um, and uh, of our faith in general, such a wonderful creed. So please uh, join. Uh, I'll ask the questions and we'll give the answers together. What is the chief and highest end of man? Man's chief and highest end is to glorify God and fully to enjoy him forever. How doth it appear that there is a God? What is the word of God? The 
Please be seated. Just before the service started, Sharon asked me, have you been good? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm doing the confession uh, of the prayer of confession, and so honestly, no. <laughs> and I dare say that's true for all of us. We've tried, but we've failed. Uh, uh, I'm making an assumption, but based on my own experience. And so let's bow our heads and confess our sins from this past week. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are for the clarity of this creed and your open, loving, and abundant revelation of yourself to us in all your works, in the wonder of nature, the spark in our souls, and above all, your word and your spirit. We confess this morning that we have failed your rule of faith and obedience in ways large and small, by commission and by omission this past week. We pause to reflect now just how and to silently lay those failings before you. Oh God, be mer merciful to us, sinners all. O oh God, be merciful to us, sinners all. O oh God, be merciful to us, sinners all. And now receive this assurance of pardon. We lift our heads and say like Peter on that day of reunion, pardon, and recommissioning by the Sea of Galilee, O oh Lord, you know that we love you. And we imagine you telling us, as you did to Peter, Feed my lambs, feed my lambs, feed my lambs. So we wish to do, forgiven, recommissioned, ready to go forward again. Thank you, dear Savior. Amen. Well, let me welcome all of us again to to worship. My name is Lori Brenner. I am one of the pastors here. The last couple of weeks I was on study leave. I appreciate everything that Chris and Anthony and, the, and Stacy and Carol and the whole rest of the staff does to keep things uh, going without fail. Uh, once again, affirming that the senior pastor is not the center of the church. So uh, if you are visiting with us this morning, we would love to welcome you. We have a, a little gift for you at the Welcome Center. This is your chance to pick up one of these welcome bags. Uh, if you are, um, we would also love to connect with you. So you can use the QR code here or a connect code, to connect card that's in the pew to fill that out. One of the things that I was working on on Study Leave was our summer series, and I'm so excited about that. Did you catch all the S's? Summer series, I'm so excited. What's, an, what's an, another word for excited that it starts with an S? Psyched. Sure, let's go with that. Stoked. Summer series, I'm so stoked. Psyched. Uh, we will be doing a summer reading book series on a book called The Deeply Formed Life. And while I'm describing this, I'm going to invite um, uh, Karis and Nancy to come on up here. But The Deeply Formed Life is a book by Rich Velotis. He is a pastor in New York City. It goes on the... Uh, theory, the thesis, the conviction that we live in a world that is working to form us shallowly. And we are called to be deeply formed disciples of Jesus. It's a very practical book. It covers five practices for, uh, for transformation in the deep places in our lives. And so one chapter talks about that transformation and the next gives practices. So throughout the summer, we will be preaching through uh, this book. You can, of course, get a copy of it online for yourself. If you are old school and you would like to walk out of here with a copy today, we have some at the Welcome Center that you can purchase. During the summer, we will be gathering for worship to be hearing all this teaching at our summer worship times at 8.30 a.m. for this service and at 10 a.m. for the second. Let me tell you why we did that. It's because I don't know if you realize that several times this spring, the second service 
has had um, as many people or almost as many people worshiping as we have at this service. We are a congregation with two uh, fully vibrant worship services. And that second service is primarily families. Well, 1045 in the summer is too late for families. It just, it gets the day going too late. So they're adjusting forward. We're also adjusting forward. It'd be the equivalent, I think, of asking us to worship at eight, which we're not gonna do at this service. So 8.30, it'll be nice and bright out because this is, this is Seattle. It's always sunny. So 8.30 in the summer starts on July 2nd. Those of you who tend to worship online, I want to make sure that you're aware of that as well, and we will enjoy the summer together. Also during the summer, I want to introduce you to Karis Parker. Karis is a graduate of Fuller Seminary. She spent the last year over in, uh, over in Scotland. She's under care with the Seattle Presbytery. On the back of your order of worship, you can use the QR code to go to our blog on our website. Those of you worshiping online, go to our website, wsp.org, hit the blog. You can learn more about Karis. Karis is going to be here as a pastoral summer intern, uh, working particularly in connection and in pastoral care, and, um, and she's got the height factor going. So uh, when you get a chance, Karis will be at the table out in the lobby, at Phyllis's table out in the lobby, so say hi to Karis, and you'll see and hear more from Karis this summer. And then I also thank you, Karis. Let's welcome Karis, can we? And then the other thing that's happening, very exciting in two weeks, is we are having a party for Carol Aronson, and Nancy has a task for you, so pay attention to this. Thank you. I'm Nancy Santo. I'm one of your deacons. And out in the narthex at the deacons table, we have all these pretty cards and this white box. We'd like for you to grab a card and write a message to Carol. Be sure to sign it and then put it in the, in the white box. And these will be out on the table for the next two Sundays. And then on Carol's retirement, at her retirement celebration, we'll present her a box of good wishes. That's right. And it's a secret, so don't tell Carol, yeah, right? Yeah, don't tell Carol, though. She doesn't know She's anything about right this. She's standing right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's also no secret is that we want to bless Carol greatly, the way she has blessed us. And one tangible way we want to do this is we'd like to give her a gift as she heads out on her road trip. So you will also find in your bulletin, in the postcard you should have received in the mail, on our website, places if you would like to donate towards a thank you gift to Carol, you can do that. It is tax deductible and uh, as, no as a normal thing. You can also write a check with Carol's name in the memo. But we want to, uh, we'd love to send Carol on her road trip with a real blessing. Let's now stand and greet people around you in worship. Feel free to walk among the aisles. Let's, let's not continue in worship without welcoming those around us. Please stand and welcome each other. be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning, as Dr. Brand used to refer to it, is from Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. 
With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Let's join in prayer for the dedication of our offering. Lord God Almighty, thank you that you have called us, atoned for our sins, everything that is weak and frail and limited in us, that you are sending us in your power and your grace into the world. Thank you for your generosity to us. Thank you for the brothers and sisters in this congregation and their generosity back to you. Thank you for those who have said yes to being sent by you in the global church, for Phyllis and her work, for the work of our Bless Big Global Mission Partners. Thank you for the generosity that is sending uh, $200,000 out to those Bless Big Global Mission Partners. We are so grateful. Thank you for providing for us and the generosity of this congregation that continues to step up and support the mission and the ministry here. Thank you most of all that you're able to take everything that is limited and finite and probably shouldn't stretch that far in our lives and extend it into your unlimited, infinite, inexhaustible grace for us and your world. Thank you and we bless you. Please take these offerings and tithes that we bring and do it again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
morning, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you today. It's really great to be here again. I know many of you maybe not weren't here when I was here last time. It's been some time, maybe about 10 years, I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, I'm back. In our work, Schools for Africa, it's God who directs our path. And I want to show you exactly how that works, how God leads and directs, and how in October of last year, God led us to start up a new ministry in Jos, Plateau State, Nigeria. Several new works to the honor and glory of his name. God took us to Plateau State to plant our feet on higher ground for a purpose. So let me tell you and show you exactly what happened. Late last year, we went to Plateau State. I think you recognize these people. <laughs> We had accompanied Dr. Ron and Sharon Rice and Mr. Ayuba Gufuan as they distributed free wheelchairs, about 700 of them in several different locations. In Plateau State, our team stayed in the guest house of the University of Jos. We met Dr. Danny McCain and several Nigerian pastors. So during the course of one conversation, I mentioned to these Nigerian pastors that in our organization, Schools for Africa, we minister especially to the Fulani people with schools, clinics, and grazing solutions. The pastors then told me a little bit about the crisis in Plateau State in Jos, the killing and the fighting between the Fulani herdsmen and farmers in that area. In fact, one pastor's wife had lost several members of her family in that crisis, and she was shocked that we were actually assisting the Fulani. So here's a little bit of background to the Fulani farmer crisis in, in uh, Jos. The Fulani are a people numbering between 20 and 25 million in total. They're one of the largest ethnic groups in the Sahel and West Africa, widely dispersed across the whole region. In Nigeria alone, there are 8 million Fulani, one-third of whom, about 2,500, are nomadic, nomadic pastoralists. The Fulani see Islam as their ethnic religion, the majority being Sunni Muslims. From northern Nigeria, the Fulani, the Hausa, the Kanuri people are migrating southwards, pressuring other ethnic people to make room for them and their cattle and their religious interests while from the south, the Yoruba, Igbo, and other tribes are migrating northward with Christianity, appealing to people to accept this identity. So these moves have made the Middle Belt Nigeria, the Middle Belt ethnic communities in Plateau, Benue, Nasarawa, and Kaduna states to be very vulnerable, setting these communities as targets of religious violence. In 2001, there was a terrible crisis in Jos, Plateau State. There was a str it was a struggle for space, for land. In one community, 109 people were killed, leaving behind almost 3,000 dependents and losing 1,500 hectares of land. In 2013, 63 people were killed. In 2014, 1,300 people were killed. So what then is the role of the church in this kind of situation? The church is the body of Christ, right? We are to lift up Jesus Christ in every situation. It is when we lift up Jesus that he draws all men to himself. Jesus told us in Matthew 5, 14 through 16, that we are the light of the world a town built on a hill. We are to let our light shine before others to glorify our Father who is in heaven. If in any situation there is darkness, if any people remain dark, it means that we as Christians are yet to bring light into that situation, into that people group. We are to reach out to these communities with the good news of Jesus Christ. We are to be the light and the love of Jesus with faith, 
justice, charity, and development, clinics, grazing solutions, and schools for everyone. This will bring about peace. I explained to the pastors that day in Dr. McCain's living room that in our schools, Fulani children sit together in class with children of other tribes, enemy tribes. They sit together, and as these children who were once enemies do math and science together, eat lunch together, play soccer after school together, they come to learn that they're all just Nigerian kids, and they're becoming friends. They're growing up as friends, they're living together as friends, and they're changing Nigeria as friends. And there is peace. In James 3.18, we read, Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And that is our goal. That, that is God's plan and purpose for Schools for Africa, our organization. We want a harvest of righteousness. So on Sunday, there in Plateau State, there was to be a wheelchair distribution near Joss. But I had been invited to a baby dedication in the Equa Peace Church in Furaka, which is close to Joss. Officer Jacob Adamu, who is one of our team, invited me to the dedication of his little baby son, Jesse. And so I didn't go to the wheelchair distribution, but I went to the Equa Church with Officer Jacob. And there we met Jacob's family, his wife, and his four children. The dedication service was wonderful. I was so impressed by the presence of the Holy Spirit in that service, by the obvious devotion and love for Jesus of the pastor and his members. And as I sat in that little tin shack, a rented tin shack that was their church, God began to speak to me. He said, build a permanent church for this congregation. Build, buy land, build them a permanent house of worship. So after the service, I went and talked to Pastor Joel and told him what God had talked to me about. So because in our organization, we build schools for Fulani children, always nearby a church, I asked Pastor Joel, how would you feel and how would your members feel if we built a school for Fulani children near your church so that you could be involved in that ministry? Would the church members be willing to be missionaries, pastors, teachers in that school? And Pastor Joel said, yes, we would be willing to do that. So the very following day, one of the church elders named Pastor Lazarus brought a Fulani friend to meet me. His name is Zubaru. I told Zubaru about our organization, how we work, about our schools for Fulani children, and how in most of the schools, it is Christian pastors who are the teachers and church members. And did Zubaidu think that maybe his people would agree, would want such a school for themselves in their community? Zubaidu went back, talked to his people, and came back with the answer. The answer was yes, we would very much welcome such a school. <clears throat> so then I talked to our supporters in the U.S. about building a permanent house of worship for the Peace Church in Furaka. And before leaving Joss, the money came, and we purchased a suitable plot of land. You see Joel holding the, the paper in his hand for the new land for the church. And we, the, the plot of land was very close to the old church, so we're able to just walk over to the new one. When I put out word to my supporters that we needed money to build a proper church and a school in Joss, one family, one family from Arlington, Washington, immediately responded, we will build the church and the school, just like that, answered to answer prayer. So we, we had bought the land. We invited an Equa church pastor to come and dedicate the land for the new building. Here are some pictures now of the building process, which was quite a challenge because of the rocky, stony ground. This is what we had to deal with before we could start erecting the walls. But now, by God's special grace, the building is complete. Thank God. 
One more, I think, to show the complete building. There you go. That's the Equit Peace Church in Furaka. In the meantime, Zubaru, our Fulani friend, took us to meet with the Fulani chief, the Ardo, who represented all the Fulani families in the area. He welcomed us into his home. He even served us the traditional food called fura danono, which is sour milk with millet inside. It looks like that. Very delicious. So Ardo showed us land in the Lamido area, a stunningly beautiful area, which we purchased and on which we began to build a new school, the Solid Rock <laughs> Good Life Academy is the name of the school. We drilled a borehole for the school and we build, drilled a second borehole for the Peace Church. So the community also has water. And that's the church borehole. And the best thing of all is that members of this Equa Church have expressed a strong willingness to be involved at the school. Two of the members, Victoria and James Emmanuel, agreed to be a teacher and counselor at the school. And we know that Pastor Joel will be a constant visitor coming to pray and encourage the, the teachers. We had an enrollment day, enrolling Fulani and farmers' children. And there were many, as you can see, beautiful children, very beautiful children. <laughs> How can you resist that smile? And then we conducted teacher interviews. We had many people apply to teach in the school. We hired the best four teachers that we could find and two teacher assistants for now. It is all God's doing and it's marvelous in our sight. So every evening, I want you to look at this picture. Do you see the distant hills there? That's a bird sanctuary connected with the University of Joss. Actually, PhD students come from different countries in the world to study at that bird sanctuary. It was so beautiful. So I like to walk around this beautiful area while the building was going on. Love the cows. And I noticed these deep holes, many of them. And I really had, I had to start being careful where I walked because everywhere I looked there were these holes and I thought that they were wells, maybe dry wells. So I went back and I asked the security guard at the school what they were and he said, no, they're mining. It's, there's tin mining going on in this area. And he took me over to see where some mining was going on right at that very, at that very time. It was very interesting. They lower down these buckets deep into the earth, bring them out. The, the women wash the soil and the, the soil itself washes off and it leaves tin like that. And then they take it into town and they sell it. It's interesting, but very, very dangerous because many of the holes have grass covering them. You know, they abandon the holes. They don't fill them. They just abandon them like that. And one day we heard the shouting and this little baby calf had fallen into one of the mine holes. But the, the herdsmen, they lowered him down on a rope. He held the calf and they brought, they pulled up both the herdsmen and the calf together and saved them. So that was good. So I had the privilege of praying and preaching on the last day in the original Peace Church. I shared on how to bring our friends to Jesus, explaining that Jesus had demonstrated how to do this. Follow me, Jesus said in Matthew 4:19, and I will make you fishers of men. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. With these words, Jesus is giving us first a task, I told the congregation, that of bringing our friends to him. And then he gives us a promise that when we work with him, the yoke will be easy and the burden will be light. We learn of him and we find rest for our souls. There are six ways in which Jesus brought people to himself. He showed us how to do it. Six ways that we ourselves can use to bring people to Jesus. 
Number one, Jesus was a friend to sinners. We also are to befriend sinners to bring them to Jesus. Jesus met people's physical needs. He fed the hungry, he healed the sick, he raised the dead. Jesus tells us that whatever we do, whether it's to give water and food to the hungry, care for the sick, welcome strangers, visit those in prison, whatever we do for the least of these, Jesus' brothers, we do as unto him. Number three, Jesus prayed for his friends. We must pray for our friends, for our family members, for all who do not know him, that they will come to know and trust Jesus. Number four, Jesus spent his years of ministry talking to people about God. We may never, must never tire of talking to people about Jesus, sharing the good news with them and bringing them into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus laid down his life for his friends. Can we lay down our lives for our friends that they might be saved? And number six, Jesus reached out to tribes that others shunned. In his day, it was the Samaritans. What tribe in Plateau State do people shun? I asked them. We are to love our enemies in order to bring them to Jesus. So God brought us to Plateau State, to this higher ground for a purpose. And I believe that purpose is to encourage our brothers and sisters in the Equa Peace Church to become fishers of men to bring more and more souls to Jesus Christ, souls which we pray might even include the Fulani. We celebrated and dedicated the permanent Peace Church in Furaka on March 24th, worshiping there for the first time on the following day. On that day, our Free Methodist Conference Superintendent John Raji brought the message, and he preached from Matthew 21, 13, where Jesus declared, my house shall be a house of prayer. And then he went over and he picked up Officer Jacob's little baby, Jesse, and he declared him to be a destiny child, as it was his dedication in that peace church that brought about a new building for the congregation and a new school for Fulani children. So Jesse is a destiny child. Finally, the building of the new solid rock Academy was complete. We have 200 children already enrolled. We have six teachers now and assistant teachers, and we opened the school on April 24, 2023. What a happy, happy day. That's our staff. We invited our friend Ayuba Gufuan, together with Pastor Joel, and the Fulani Ardo and Zubairu to come and visit each classroom and greet the children on that first day of school. The pastor prayed for each class as they began that God would bless them, would keep them safe along with their families, and give them a wonderful and successful time in school. So through Ayuba, I met another Fulani chief who rules over hundreds of families in the Riom area of Plateau State. We met, we talked, and I asked if I might visit his people in the Riom local government area, and we might talk about a school for their children. But word came to us later that this Ardo is of the opinion that the school should be built, but immediately just handed over to the Fulani to manage. And you know, that's not the way we do it. We want to connect the church to the school. So there's been a lot of back and forth discussion about this situation. Ayuba later sent me an email, and he called this community a hotspot. When I asked him what did he mean by Riom being a hotspot, he said that in that local government, there's been the worst and most devastating inter-ethnic conflict in Nigeria. The worst. The Berom ethnic tribe has lost significant territory, and many, many, many human lives have been lost there. So should we as Christians go to Riom and minister to the Fulani and the Berom tribes? Yes, we should, if we are invited, if God opens the door. The darker the area, the darker the people's hearts, the more they need the light of Jesus Christ. Isn't that right? Amen? 
And as Jesus told us, we are the light of the world. Look at this verse, Isaiah 6, 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. So if we have truly accepted to follow Jesus, when God says to us, as he said to Isaiah, Whom shall I send? To Rion, to Cano, to Seattle, to California, to New York. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? We should say without hesitation, here am I, send me. So in conclusion, this is how God works. He uses us. God, in his own mysterious way, directs us to a dark place, a place a situation, men and women who really need his help and need his light, even as he directed us to the Peace Church in Joss. When the need is made known, God touches the heart of a person or persons who rise up and meet the need and support the work, even as God did with that family in Arlington, Washington, who gave money to build both the church and the school. And then our SFA team, our Schools for Africa team, both here in the States and in Nigeria, we put everything we have to, to making sure that that job is done correctly to the honor and glory of God, just as we did with the work in Joss. That's how God works. God, you, and we in SFA, we work together to bring his light into those dark places those dark hearts for whom Christ died. Now that you know about our ministry, we would so much appreciate your partnership and your help if God touches your heart in that way. You can connect with us through emails. You can connect with us through the phone. You can connect with us through a response sheet that's on the table out in the foyer. So that's what I have to tell you and share with you this morning. Thank you so much for allowing me to do so. Thank you so much, Phyllis. You. And just before Carol comes up yes. to do our morning prayers, I wanted a chance to pray okay. with you. If any of you can stay around right after this service, the film about the, the incident, the story that happened in Phyllis's life when she was kidnapped during her work in Nigeria and, and, and rescued that film, remind me the name of it again. Kidnapped Redemption. Kidnapped Redemption. Yes. That will be in Howell showing right after the congregational meeting. Uh, so let's pray for Phyllis and all the work that happens there. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for Phyllis. Thank you for that she said yes when you said, uh, whom shall I send? We thank you so much and we pray your blessing on this new uh, school and this new church building. Continue to bless the Peace Church. We pray for the teachers and the children at the Solid Rock Academy. We pray that the work of Schools for Africa will continue your reconciling and your peacemaking work among the Fulani and other tribes in Africa. And we especially pray that you make a way into Riom, that you open a way through into that darkness, that you protect those with the courage to go through, and that you're reconciling and peacemaking work continues in that place. We praise you. We adore you. We know that you know the name of every man, woman, and child in that area just as you do ours. Teach those names to us in prayer and in action. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's Thank express you. our gratitude for Phyllis, please, for being with us. Please join me in prayer. Our Father and our God, we come to you this morning blessed by your love, encouraged by your word, and thankful for the opportunity to gather as your people in your house as well as online. We thank you and are in awe of your creation, especially this time of year, with the sound of the birds singing us as we wake new growth with its sweet smells and delightful colors. The sun rises, and yes, the sun sets. Thank you. We remember our missionaries we support in prayer and financially around the world, as well as here in Seattle. Bless their work. Encourage each one. We pray your continued blessing on the work that Phyllis is doing, and thank you for her challenge from your word this morning. 
May we each remember that as your disciples, we also are missionaries as we reflect Jesus Christ, as we are a light to our neighbor and our families. May we be bold in our faith. We pray for students, teachers, and school administrators as they wind down their school year. Thank you, Lord, for teachers that faithfully invest in the lives of our young people. We pray for students of all ages as they complete this year of studies, some graduating high school or college, that for each, they have not only grown in their educational studies, but that they've grown and deepened in their relationship with you and your word this last year. We pray for wisdom and discernment for our deacons and elders being elected today, as well as for all elders and deacons that will be serving during the upcoming year. We thank you for our elders and deacons that have served this last year, for their leadership and for their care for us. We pray for those in our church family who are experiencing the loss of good health. We pray for those undergoing treatment for cancer, for Nan Hall, Roger Armstrong and his daughter Hesper, and Craig Schreiner. May each be aware of your love and your presence at this time. For those with other health concerns, for three-year-old Mia, for Joanna Martin hospitalized in Indiana with pneumonia, for Dick Ramsey with COVID, we pray for healing and encouragement. We also bring before you individually people that are near and dear to our hearts, that are struggling with health issues or addictions that may not be publicly known. May each be aware of your presence and love for them. And may we be faithful in our prayers. And now together we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please stand now, and may this closing hymn be our prayer. Be thou my vision. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. It's hymn number 642.
may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us both now and evermore. Amen.